In this video, we're going to look at finding the sample size or the number of trials that are necessary to meet a particular condition. And so for a, bi a binomial random variable with n and p, what we're going to use if we're now asked to calculate this by hand is this probability equation here. And if we have our CAS on hand, we're going to use the inverse binomial n function. And to do that, we need to know the probability of success, P, the number of successful outcomes we require, and our probability in the form of less than or equal to the number of successful outcomes. So probably the easiest way to do this is to do this using an example. So here's an example. The probability an arrow hits a target is 0.3. arrow hitting a target 0.3. All shots are independent of each other. Calculate the minimum number of shots required. So we need the minimum number of shots required so that the probability of at least one arrow, at least one arrow, of at least one arrow hitting the target is greater than 0.99. So what we're after is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. At least 1 has to be greater than 0 0.99. That's what we're after. We also have that p is 0 0.3. We're asked to find n. This is saying find n. And the independent information is telling us that it's binomial. So how do we do this? Let's do it using CAS first. So to use inverse binomial n on our CAS calculator, we need the value for the probability that x is less than or equal to some value because the CAS, calcul actually, CAS calculator uses cumulative prob probability. So it calculates from zero up. So you always need to be aware of this. So what you're always looking for is that it starts from zero and goes up to x, not from x and going to one. Um, we know the probability of success is 0.3 and we need to put in a number of successes. Now, because our probability is round the wrong way, we can rewrite this probability as the opposite of this and one minus this. So on our probability table, what we're looking for is the probability that X is greater than or equal to one. So we're actually looking at this section, which continues on infinitely in that direction until we find our n. That section gives us a total when we add up all of these probabilities adds to 0 0.99. What we're going to do is we're going to use the opposite of that. Anything that's left which is just going to be the 0 value for x and that has got to be 0 0.01. So what we're actually going to have is we're going to have the probability that x is less than, which is the opposite of greater than. So if it has to be greater than or equal to 1, then the x values that are not in that greater than or equal to 1 are just 0. And the probability of that needs to be less than 1 minus 0 0.99. or 0 0.1. So that's the value that we put into our calculator. And this x value that we're finding here of 0, that's our x value. And that's the x value that we put into our CAS. So we're actually going to put in a 0. So what we're going to do, if you think about it in a different way, is this red way is looking for how many successes how many successful trials we need to make sure that it's greater than 0.99% chance. 
The other way to do it is to say, well, let's look at what has to happen so that the probability of failure is 1 minus 0 0.99. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, when you put that information into your CAS, this is what it looks like. So we use our probability distributions inverse with the n on the end. And remember, we are changing our probability that we're asked to find to the equivalent opposite thing. So if we were asked to find the number of successes so that the probability is more than 0.5, that would be the same as asking for the number the number of failures where the probability is less than 0.5. So that's what we've done here. So we were asked to find the probability that at least one gave a greater than probability than 0 0.99. So we've changed it to x is less than 0 because that's the opposite to greater uh, at least one is 0. And the opposite to 0 0.99 is 1 minus 0 0.99, which gives us 0 0.01. And so this is our cumulative probability here. So that's what goes in there. And the x value that we're finding that for, that is our number of successes. And so when you put that in, you've got two options for an answer. If you press OK, without ticking the matrix box, you'll get this first line which tells you that the answer is 13. If you tick the matrix box, this is what you'll get. You'll get the matrix here. So if you tick that box, you'll get this answer here. And what this answer is saying, this first row here, this 12 tells you for 12 trials, this is the probability that x is less than 0. And you can see, if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see what we were looking for was for the value to be less than 0 0.01. And it's not quite less than 0 0.01, it's 0 0.138. So that's not the required one. For 13 trials, you can see that it has just dipped below the 0 0.01. And so this one here is our answer. Probably the easiest way to get the answer is to not tick this matrix form and just use this one. So how do you do this by hand using the formula? Well, you can't do it for x is greater than or equal to 1 because you would need to do the probability that x is equal to 1 because you only have a formula for equal to so and then probability that x is equal to 2, etc, etc, etc. So we're going to use that opposite idea again and work out instead what is the probability what is the n value for the probability that x is less than 0 being less than 0 0.01 that's the one we're going to work out less than or equal to 0 because that's what it can be and so for this we're just going to work out probability that x is less than or equal to 0 for a binomial is in fact exactly the same as the probability that x is equal to 0 because there is nothing less than a 0 for our x values. If you think about our table of values, the smallest number of successes you can have is 0. So now we can take this idea and find the fact that we want our probability of x being equal to 0. So now we bring in our formula for binomial probability and that formula is on your formula sheet and so away we go let's fill in our values and we end up with nc0 because our value that we're finding for x is a 0 0.3 that's our probability of success to the power of 0 1 minus 0.3 to the power of n minus 0 so we can simplify some of these things any combination where you're finding zero things to choose from it is equal to one. Any power, any 
value raised to the power of 0 is a 1. And so what we actually have is just 0.7 to the n is less than or equal to 0 0.01. And what we want to do here is we want to solve for n. And so we need to get the n down out of the power. To be able to do that, we're going to take the log of both sides. You can take whatever base log you like. I'm going to take log to the base e. And then I'm going to use my log laws to deal with this power here. And that power can now come out the front. And so I end up with n times log to the base e of 0 0.7. And so now we've got a log equation and you know how long these things can go on for. So I need to um, get n by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by log to the base e of 0 0.7. Now I can do that because this value is not 0. Um, and so when I do that, I get an n value of whatever this log is divided by whatever this log is. So it might be nice if this was something that had a power, that was a power so I could bring it out the front and cancel it down. Um, and this had a power and I could bring it out the front and cancel it down. But I don't, so I'm going to leave my answer like this. Please do not be tempted to subtract these two values. That's not the log law that we're looking at here. We have got one log divided by another log not one log subtracted from another log. So this is the answer as best as I can do it by hand here.